Ahoy, land lovers! First mate Maddie here from the good ship Wild Rift, filling in for Captain Allen. We're back again to share the spoils from the upcoming patch 3.2. This time, you'll see even more big gameplay updates to Elemental Rift, as well as in the core game. And if you caught our last video, we mentioned we were thinking about theming our patches going forward. So set your watches, weigh anchor, and raise the sails. Welcome to Wild Rift Patch 3.2, Time and Tide. Nautilus, the titan of the depths, is gaining his land legs and emerging from the deepest, darkest corner of the ocean. Nautilus is a tanky support for players who want to condemn their enemies to the abyss. Hook, line, and sink a target with Nautilus's first ability, Dredge Line. Then, lock them in place with his passive, Staggering Blow. On a short cooldown, attacking an enemy briefly roots them for follow-up damage. His second ability, Titan's Wrath, grants Nautilus a shield and waves of damage around his next few basic attacks. Riptide calls upon the power of the ocean and creates slowing tremors in a circle. And give them a taste of the salty sea with his ultimate depth charge. Summon a terrifying shockwave that chases down an enemy champion and knocks them skyward. Why do I hear boss music? But Nautilus isn't the only thing waiting below the surface. The Blood Harbor Ripper is crossing names off of his list and collecting bounties, also in the support rule. Pike is a support assassin. While most supports protect their allies and thrive in lane, he can be anywhere and everywhere, waiting for the right moment to secure the kill. First off, Pike cannot increase his maximum health. Instead, any health gained from items becomes bonus attack damage. His first ability, Bone Skewer can be charged to throw out his harpoon and yank an enemy towards him. Tapping deals damage in front of him instead. When you've got one on the hook, use Phantom Undertow to dash in a line, stunning enemies caught in the slipstream. With Ghostwater Dive, Pike gains movement speed and invisibility. It grants him the perfect opportunity to slip away from the dragon lane and roam around the map undetected. When stealthed, his passive allows him to regain health quickly. His terrifying ultimate, Death From Below, executes enemies at low health, fully resetting when he claims a kill. While he might not be a traditional support, Pike isn't entirely selfish. Death From Below grants extra gold to the ally who gave him some backup. If Pike's teammates help him hunt down a target, he'll make sure they get their cut. Over the past few weeks, we've been testing one of our biggest gameplay updates, Elemental Rift. We loved hearing your feedback and seeing how you harness the power of dragons to heat up your games. Elemental Rift will be making its return this patch as a featured game mode. But as we're still in testing, it'll look a bit different from the current version. Here's a quick preview. Hey everybody, it's Adnan here from the gameplay team. As a reminder, we have a few goals for Elemental Rift. Firstly, we want to reduce the pressure of the early game and give players some breathing room between objective spawns and team fights. We also want to find a better balance between team coordination and individual impact to make it easier for you to showcase your skill and carry your team to victory. So here's how we think Elemental Rift is going so far in patch 3.1. We're satisfied with how often the terrain changes were popping up, with over 85% of games triggering the Elemental Rift and we're open to making it happen even more often. However, not many games ended up featuring the big Elder Dragon. On one hand, Elder is pretty powerful, so it's okay if it doesn't show up all the time, but it should appear a little more often so that you can reasonably use it to win your game if it's running long. Speaking of dragons, we're glad to hear that players are happy that the first dragon spawns a little later in the game but we also hear your feedback that maybe the respawn timers are a little too long. We're considering some changes here in the future, but we're also curious to hear your feedback on this with our next update. In the Time and Tide patch, we're thinking about the design of Dragon Buffs. This time, we're testing two different versions of this system and we'd love for you to play with both. One system features multiple dragon elements with more weight given to dragons in the late game. 
and the other test will feature a single element per game that grants a stacking buff as you secure more dragons. With these variations, we're hoping to find a good middle ground between adding an exciting new part of our strategic gameplay while balancing our goals for the map. We can't wait to hear from you as we prepare for Elemental Rift's full release in patch 3.3. We've heard from you since the very first open beta that disruptive behavior is one of the worst experiences you can have in Wild Rift. We know how frustrating it can be to have someone swipe out of your game, leaving you and your teammates at a huge disadvantage. To combat this, we'll be launching the option to remake your games. If one of your teammates disconnects or leaves the game shortly after it begins, you'll have an opportunity to remake the game without being penalized. A remake results in a loss for the absent player, but for everyone else, it'll be as if the game never happened. It also sucks to have a teammate disconnecting midway through a game. So, we'll be rolling out lever mitigations for losses. Any players who leave in ranked will now be penalized more harshly on their climb. In cases like these, the rest of the team will receive more ranked fortitude or lose less VP. These features are just one step on our overall journey to make Wild Rift less frustrating to play. So you can expect to see more changes with that goal in mind later this year. Let's take a look at the gameplay changes coming to this patch. New runes have been a highly requested addition from many of you. I'm pleased to announce in the Time and Tide update, we're adding more rune options for your loadout. Lethal Tempo is a new keystone rune for champs that love to attack. Gradually increase your attack speed when in combat, and after a few attacks or abilities hit, you'll gain a chunk more. Is it an item? No, it's a brand new rune. Kraken Slayer is joining Wild Rift as a keystone choice for carries. We've plundered the bonus true damage on every third attack to give players some more options in sustained fights. A new minor rune in the Domination Tree is Giant Slayer. It's perfect for when you know you'll be facing a tankier foe. You'll do increased damage based on how much bonus health your opponents build. Scorch is a minor rune in the Domination Tree that will help you burn down your enemies in the early game. You'll deal a little extra magic damage after landing an ability. In the Resolve Tree, Nullifying Orb is a new minor rune. If you take damage from a champion that brings you to low health, you'll gain a mini shield. This rune will grant you some extra safety in those tougher lane matchups. Ultimate Shield is a minor rune, joining the Resolve Tree. After casting your ultimate, you'll gain a shield for a short duration. This is a rune to run if you need more durability in the middle of the fight. Nimbus Cloak, a new minor rune in the Inspiration Tree, grants movement speed after casting a summoner spell. The boost in speed when flashing out of a sticky situation may be all you need to get back to the safety of your team. To assist on your split push strategies, Demolish is a new minor rune in the Inspiration Tree. If you're in the range of a turret, you'll charge up an attack that deals extra damage to the turret after a few seconds. We're hoping this refresh of the rune system gives you more choices to customize your playstyle and we'll be tuning and balancing them throughout patch 3.2. Control wards are here as a new trinket option. They detect invisible enemy traps and other wards that can be destroyed without a sweeping lens. Each player can have only one on the map at a time. Vision is a delicate system in Wild Rift with the potential to be meta-shifting depending on how effective it is. We're hoping the addition of trinket control wards allows for more depth in the vision system, but doesn't burden a specific role or item build. We hope our private eye is as good as she claims to be, because it looks like someone is on her trail. Tormenting your nightmares and making his debut in this wild pass is Dream Raider Nasus. He spent years studying in his endless library, but now he's unleashed and hunting down psychics. I bring death. This year, we're experimenting with new ways to get content in Wild Rift. In the Time and Tide update, one of the global events we'll be rolling out in some regions is themed around the upcoming cosmic skins for Master Yi and Lulu. In this event, you can earn or buy tickets. Tickets can then be exchanged for tokens that can be immediately redeemed for cosmic-styled goodies and skins, and also a chance to test your luck and get cool stuff even quicker. 
as you play through daily missions, we'll be giving away free tokens. While this event takes elements from games of chance, it's combined with a direct way to pick up these skins. We hope it feels fun, satisfying, and respectful of your game time. So please, let us know what you think when it releases later this month. Now, onto Wild Rift Esports. There's just over a month until we set sail for Madrid, Spain, where the first ever Wild Rift Global Icons Tournament will take place. Regional qualifiers are happening now to determine the top 24 teams that will earn their way into the competition. So mark your calendars and tune in to experience the journey of these teams as they compete for the Icons Trophy and the glory of being the Season 1 champion. What connects the Wild West and a futuristic dystopia? No, it's not Los Angeles. It's the skin montage. Roll the music. all from us for now. We're looking forward to the release of to the release of patch 3. Point, to the release of patch 3.2. Is anyone else getting deja vu? It's not how much time you have. It's how you use it. Don't blink or you just might miss him. Echo, the boy who shattered time, arrives precisely when he means to in Wild Rift. He's an assassin mid laner and jungler and uses time-altering gizmos to put his plans in motion, even if it takes him a few tries to get it perfect. Timewinder is Echo's first ability. He throws a grenade in a line that expands after traveling a short distance. It will slow and damage anyone caught in its path, and after a few seconds, it boomerangs back to Echo. This is his bread and butter ability to deal damage in the laning phase. Parallel Convergence throws out another gadget that slows enemies caught inside. If Echo enters the distortion field as well, he gains a shield and anyone trapped inside will be frozen in place. Echo's ultimate, Chrono Break, completely turns back the clock. In a pinch, he becomes untargetable and rewinds to a more favorable timeline from a few seconds ago. He'll also heal, and enemies near him will take massive temporal damage. You can see exactly where Echo will zap back to with his after image, which follows him wherever he goes. Echo experts can throw out abilities with his damage stacking passive and his dash attack, phase dive, to outwit his opponents right on schedule. Players across the world tell us that Echo is one of their favorite characters in Runeterra, and he's available in, well, pretty much every Riot game and Arcane. So we're thrilled to finally bring League's punk genius to Wild Rift. Whether you want to dive into the depths of the support role or turn back time for a do-over on a team fight, we hope there's something for you to get excited by in the Time and Tide patch. Thanks everyone, and we'll see you on the Rift. <laughs>